Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Thursday, September 3rd. This is Gina McGuire. Over the next few days, the main concerns will be the increase in winds across the Great Basin along with low relative humidity, especially across Nevada and western Utah as we move through today and tomorrow. However, still stronger winds will continue across Utah on Saturday. If we look at conditions yesterday, thunderstorms did occur over parts of southeast Idaho into western Wyoming, also with a few isolated storms over northern and eastern Utah. These thunderstorms did produce light amounts of precipitation in some areas with localized areas of wetting rains over parts of southeast Idaho. Over the last one to two weeks, all of the precipitation has been focused over the eastern half of the Great Basin, with some local areas seeing above normal rainfall in this two-week period, especially over parts of the central Idaho mountains and down into southern Utah and southeast Nevada. However, the western half of Nevada into northern Nevada and southwest Idaho have been very dry over the last two weeks. Looking at the fire activity reported yesterday, light initial attack was reported across the Great Basin with only a few small fires that were reported over parts of western Nevada and into southeast Idaho and Utah, with still growth on our larger fires over the central Idaho mountains. The water vapor satellite image from this morning shows a deep trough of low pressure along the west coast, and this area of low pressure will continue to deepen and drop south, which will produce plenty of gusty winds across the Great Basin for the next couple of days. This low will eventually move east across the Great Basin as we move through this weekend and will eventually bring cooler temperatures and precipitation to the northern half of the Great Basin. However, in the meantime, we'll still be dealing with dry and gusty southwest flow. Also, Tropical Storm Kevin is located in the far southern portion of the image off the Baja coast, and this moisture will not affect the Great Basin. Looking at the significant fire potential for today, we will continue to see moderate fire potential across much of the western half of Nevada with these drier conditions in place. However, fire potential has decreased more significantly over the eastern and northern portions of the area due to recent moisture and cooler temperatures. Now looking at the surface conditions expected today, winds will be very gusty, especially over the eastern half of Nevada and to western Utah, where wind gusts will exceed 35 or 40 miles per hour at times, and still southwest winds will remain quite breezy over the rest of Nevada and Utah into southeast Idaho, with wind gusts between 25 and 30 miles per hour. These winds will also coincide with lower relative humidity with winds increasing as we go through the next two days. With these winds and the dry conditions, especially over western Nevada, we'll likely see some areas of blowing dust. Also, with the trough of low pressure situated along the west coast, out ahead of it we're still seeing some moisture for thunderstorms over parts of central and southeast Idaho into western Wyoming and down into Utah. These thunderstorms will likely bring at least some light amounts of precipitation. If we look into Friday and this area of low pressure drops a little bit further south, we start to bring additional moisture to parts of northern Nevada and especially into Idaho with continuing chances for thunderstorms over the eastern side of the Great Basin. However, drier air is starting to push into western and central Nevada. This drier air in combination with the increasing winds will allow for increasing fire potential if we see ignitions over parts of the Sierra Front and over parts of northeast and eastern Nevada into western Utah. Looking at the surface conditions, you can see the increase in winds, especially over eastern Nevada and western Utah. This bluer color is showing wind gusts in excess of 50 miles per hour possible over western Utah. Although relative humidity might be a little bit higher over western Utah with the strength of the winds, if we do see a start, we would likely see fire spread. Also over eastern Nevada, the wind gusts will likely be between 40 and 45 miles per hour, which will also coincide with relative humidity below 15 or 20 percent. And also on Friday, winds will be gusty along the Sierra front with these drier conditions as well. We'll likely see a more larger area of blowing dust across Nevada as we move into Friday as these winds increase, but also we'll start seeing more moisture over northern areas with potential for wetting rains over the central Idaho mountains, which will hopefully affect some of our incidents in those areas. Also, scattered showers or thunderstorms will continue across Utah into western Wyoming. By Saturday, this trough of low pressure starts to move off to the east, and this will allow for significantly decreasing temperatures, especially across the northern half of the Great Basin, where we'll see temperatures decrease to 15 to 20 degrees below normal over northern Nevada into Idaho, along with this increase in precipitation, which will also drop snow levels in the central Idaho mountains down to 6,500 or 7,000 feet. This will significantly reduce our fire potential across Idaho and into Wyoming and Utah as this moisture continues. However, still breezy and dry conditions will keep fire potential across Nevada in the low to moderate range. Looking at surface conditions on Saturday, again these breezy winds continue across Utah but are lesser in speed than what we will see on Friday across the area with still some gusty winds continuing across Nevada 
and Idaho as well. Looking at the weather picture, you can see this increase in wetting rains, especially over the central Idaho mountains into Montana, with more scattered showers and lighter amounts of precipitation further south. Now moving into Sunday into early next week, as this trough of low pressure and cold front moves off to the east, we'll likely see a return of drier air and lighter winds across the Great Basin by Sunday, with still possibly some shower activity over the central Idaho mountains and further north. However, fire potential will still decrease significantly from the cooler, wetter weather we'll see on Saturday. Moving into Monday and through the middle of next week, we'll see gradually warming conditions and that drier air spread across Nevada and Utah and into southwest Idaho. However, temperatures will take some time to increase and will only increase to near normal as we approach Wednesday. Therefore, fire potential will remain relatively low across the area. However, still with dry air in place and not much precipitation over parts of western Nevada, we may see that significant fire potential approach moderate as we approach the middle of next week. Also, some moisture may start to creep back into southern Utah as we pr approach Tuesday or Wednesday, bringing some showers or thunderstorms back to the area. Looking at the total forecast amounts of precipitation through Sunday with the system that's moving through on Saturday, you can see the heaviest amounts of precipitation extend from Oregon northeast across the central Idaho mountains and into Montana. So hopefully our fire activity over the central Idaho mountains will see some wetting rains as we move towards Friday and Saturday. Now looking at fire danger indices across the Great Basin, ERCs are slightly above normal over southwest and central Idaho into northern Nevada and are just below normal over the southern half of the Great Basin. However, as winds increase, this will be increasing fire potential briefly before we see cooler temperatures and some wet weather. Live fuel moistures have been near to below normal across the Great Basin. Looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook, which takes us to the middle of September, we're looking for above normal temperatures across most of the Great Basin along with below to near normal precipitation. That concludes the briefing for today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you for listening.